Hi, George here. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at how to do a vintage effect on a photograph, just like that. Give this kind of an old fashioned vintage look in here. Now the first thing we need to do is to download this original image. Let me show you where I got this one from. I'll bring that website up. And this right here on PicPic. And I'll put this link in the description so you can go ahead and just download right from that link. And the download button is right there. Okay, let's go ahead and get back to the project. Now, if you have my Photoshop Elements Coach program and you want to find out more about this, just go over there and do a couple of searches, one for old fashioned photo, that takes you to the guided edit discussion, and one for vintage effect, and that takes you to an expanded discussion of how to do vintage effects on photographs. Okay, we'll start with a brand new file here. Let's get this out of the way. And that's right here, there's the downloaded photo. Now, the first thing I want to do is just to brighten things up just a little bit, not very much in here. You don't want to have this too contrasty but I do want to lighten up the face just a bit. So let's add an adjustment layer onto this. But before we do that, I'm going to make a duplicate of the background layer. Just a habit I'm in, right click where it says background, duplicate layer, choose okay, and then hide the background. That's our safety. In case we mess things up somehow or other, we can always come back to this and start over again. Okay, let's add in an adjustment layer on this. Go up to layer, come down to new adjustment layer. You want the levels control right there. And let's choose okay. You can see here the distribution of values. There's a lot of stuff on the dark side. Obviously, that's a whole area in here is dark. And if we move this in, it just makes that darker. So you don't want that. We're way off of the white. There's no real whites in here. So let's take the white pointer and move it in towards the white just a little bit like that. This is kind of in that area here. And then take this middle control and move the middle control to the left just a little ways. And this will lighten up those darks. Don't go too far. Just a bit like that. We just want to see a bit more detail inside the face area here. And this picture has a little bit of grain on it. The grain's okay. That actually is going to add to our effect. Okay, there we go. Now let's first do the guided edit version of this. It's pretty straightforward. But I want to combine these two layers together to make this just a bit easier. So make sure on the top layer here it says Levels 1. And then hold down this keyboard shortcut. It's a Shift, Control, Alt. And then tap the E key. What that does is it merges any visible layers into a new layer up here. So we can do our edit edit on this layer. That way the levels adjustment is already included in that picture. Okay, go up to guided. There we go. And we're in the fun edits section right here. You want the old fashioned photo. There we go. Let's open this one up. This actually gives you a few steps in here that you can take a look at. It does four things. It converts to black and white. It comes down here and adjusts the tones. We've already done our tone adjustment. But we'll take a look at that anyway. It adds in some texture right here, and it adjusts the hue and saturation. We'll be doing all of these in the manual mode over in Expert or Advanced if you have 2024, but we'll see how this goes here. Now you have three options, Newspaper, Urban, and Vivid. These are basically the same options you have over on the Convert to Black and White. There's Urban, and here's Vivid. Now these all look okay. What I want is the one that has the most distortion happening here. This is a pretty nice black and white image, nice tones in there, looks good. Urban, it's a bit darker in here. And newspaper is a bit too bright in the background. You kind of lose the whole background back there. I think I'll choose urban on this one. Adjust tone. Now, the adjust tone is an automatic adjustment, as you saw there. So there's no controls in here for that. You can't adjust anything beyond just that button. Add texture just puts a grain on top. There it is. And then adjust hue saturation. Puts in an automatic adjustment in here and colorizes, as you can see right here. And then adds kind of a sepia tone look. I prefer a little bit more red to my sepia tone, so I'll bring it back a bit to the left but more saturation right about here looks pretty good to my eye. Choose OK. So that's how far you can take this using the guided edit. And it's not bad. Click on Next, and then go to In Advanced. And there we go. Here's the guided edit version. I'll go ahead and let's just rename this up here. Call it Guided Edit. So we know that. Let's now see what we can do using more advanced controls here in the Advanced or Expert mode. I'll hide the guided edit stuff. And we'll hide that layer here. And we'll come down to this layer. I'm using this because we still have the levels control available. So I can come back and make adjustments. Just double click on the icon. And here's our adjustments again. So leaving that layer available to us here is going to help out. In expert mode, we can do that. Let's come down to the background layer. Our first step is to convert this into black and white. So go up here to enhance. Come down to convert to black and white. Kind of the same things, but we have more options. We have infrared, newspaper, portraits scenic, urban, and vivid. Over there under guided, we only had newspaper, urban, and vivid. I actually like infrared on this. If you notice in here, take a look at the detail on her face. Good place to spot this. Let's go back here to scenic. 
nice and smooth gradations in there. Looks good. It's a nice photograph. Infrared adds in a lot of this distortion in here. It actually comes in and distresses the image quite a bit. And that helps to add to that old time vintage look. Old time photographs don't look that clean. So by using infrared, you can come in here and add in some distortions and more of an old timey effect. Plus you can come down here if you want to and adjust your intensity for your red, green, or blue channels and your contrast. We'll leave all that stuff alone, but you do have this to kind of fine tune things. Choose OK, and there we go. Next on this, we want to add in that grain effect. Again, that was a one click before. If you want to do the same thing that we did in the guided edits, that would be filter, come down to noise, and add noise. Same thing. There's a better way to do this though here in the advanced slash expert mode, and that's up to the filter gallery. And in here, in the texture section right here, there's our grain adjustment. And here's the regular grain. That's what you would get. But we have a different kind of grain type here. There are several grain types. Soft, sprinkles, clumped, contrasty, enlarged, stippled, horizontal, vertical, and speckle. This is kind of fun for some special effects, kind of like that effect. Looks really nice if you put it onto wood. But we're not doing that one. What we want is the clumped effect. And you get this kind of random clumpiness in here really adds to that effect of it being an old time photograph. Choose OK. Here's our clumped effect. Now if this is too much, we can actually tone this down a bit. Let me show you how to do that. I'm going to back up Control Z, back up one step here. Let's just right click on this, duplicate that layer, choose OK. There we go. Let's put that effect on this top layer here. Same thing, filter. In the filter gallery, the top one up here, this is the last filter you did. So if I used any filter in here, it would show me the last filter right at the top here. So the last one I did was filter gallery. I'll click on that and there's that clumped effect. If I want to bring this down, tone this down a bit, I can now reduce the opacity on this right up here, back this off a little bit and we'll show a little bit of the original photo through until you get just the right level of distress happening on your image. We can also come back again, double check our channel levels in here and move this a bit to the left just to bring back a bit more detail in the face. I think right about there, it looks good. Okay, now we want to come in and add in that sepia tone color effect. We'll be doing that with another adjustment layer. So I'll go to this layer, our first adjustment layer, back up to layer, come down to new adjustment layer and hue saturation. Don't check that checkbox, choose okay, leave that alone. The reason I'm not checking the checkbox is I want to have this coloration applied to both of these two layers, not just to this top layer. Click on colorize, that puts our color into the photo. Now on the hue, I want it a bit more towards the orange or sepia, right around in here. It's not very far over, right about like that. Bring the saturation up just a little bit. There we go, that's looking very nice, I think. I think right about there, that's it. At 19 I have here. You go as high as 20, 21 on that. Let's just do a 20, you can type it in as well. There we go. Saturation looks good, maybe just a little bit more saturation. I guess it's a bit more color in the background, maybe 40 on this one. We can also lighten the whole thing up a little bit. What this does is it lowers the contrast on the image. And one thing about old time photographs is they tend to lose contrast over time. They just get deteriorated and the contrast goes away. So we used a levels control here to help to balance out the contrast in the picture. We're now lowering the contrast in the whole picture by bringing up our lightness control, maybe about 12 or 13, right around in there. And that looks real nice. Okay, last thing I want to do here is to put in a vignette, just kind of darken the corners, which also tends to happen on old time pictures. They tend to get some darker spots. We're not gonna go all the way on this. I could add in some stains and things. We won't go that crazy on this, but if you want to do stains and stuff, just do a search for stains or a search for scratches on any of the free Photoshop sites, and you'll find something which you can then blend in here using a blend mode. But we do want to add in some darkening on the corners. Let's come down to our top layer and then filter. Come down to correct camera distortion. And in here, there's a vignette control. Just take this, put it all the way to the left, just like that. Choose OK. And then darkens the corners. And we did this top layer. We also blended this with this layer. Come down to this background layer. We'll do the same thing down here. Filter, correct camera distortion. Put all the way to the left. Choose OK. There we go. And if it's not quite dark enough, just come back and do it again. Filter, correct camera distortion. And you can add more to that. And that's looking pretty good. It has kind of a nice darkening now on the edges, which frequently happens on old time photographs. Let's now compare these two. Here's what we came up with using the advanced or expert mode. And then here's the guided edit. Now this isn't bad, but when you compare this with our new version, 
this looks much more like an old time photograph. We added in a lot more details in here, darkening of the corners and so forth, more roughening up in here of the image. I think this gives a real nice old fashioned photograph effect. There you go, guided edit and doing it here in advanced or expert mode. Again, the last thing I might do on this is go and find an overlay image that has some scratches on it to put a little bit of scratches in here, maybe a, a couple of stains or something. But for this demonstration, I think this is all that we need. Now, if you don't have my Photoshop Elements Coach and you want to find out more about how to do this kind of photograph, I'll put a link for that right down there in the description. It's a great new program that I just came out with recently. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. I do new videos all the time for Photoshop Elements and other graphics programs. And I'll see you next time.